With skillful tailoring, quality and sophisticated designs, the image of French house Guy La Roche will forever remain timeless. Founded by La Roche in the 1950s, he began his fashion career a few years earlier with no experience, but started with styling and millinery in New York to be followed on by work in fashion and merchandising. He returned to Paris and worked for Jean Dessers, a world-leading fashion designer of the 1940s, 50s and 60s. By 1956, La Roche had opened his own couture house and showed his first collection, which was well received. He revealed designs that would influence women and manufacturers all over the world with emphasis on elegance and refinement. 1964, he presented his autumn winter collection in Paris and was regarded as one of the top members of the couture syndicate. Distinctive features were kneecap hemlines and low loose waistlines and breaking the current trends, he substituted gaiters and leggings for fancy woolen stockings. He showed checked fabrics and tweed and hats of different styles made out of mink, beaver and sable and delicate decorative work in beads and stones were also a main characteristic. In 1989, the legendary designer passed, and the fashion house has since used a number of designers to keep up its timeless image. From Italian designer Angelo Tolazzi, whose collections featured black dresses and two-piece suits with white piping and 50-style lampshade hats, to Michael Klein and Israeli fashion designer Elber Albaz. Albaz was cited as rejuvenating the label. He showcased business apparel featuring combinations of tweed, mohair and synthetic fabrics, as well as showing daring evening gowns and favouring the colour red for his fall winter collection in 1997. However, in 1998, Albaz showed his last spring-summer ready-to-wear collection for Laroche before leaving to pursue other options. Taking Guy Laroche to the top of chic and elegance, he showed the best collection of spring-summer for that season with full skirts, sleeveless tops and plunging v-necks. Giant roses were etched onto rounded glimmering dresses while a silk flower came to adorn a neckline or a rolled shoulder strap. Suits in quietly glimmering heavy silk were perfect and smart, with poplin shirts in vanilla. The evening wear was just as quiet and graceful, slip dresses dripping with deep plum or orange sequins, and suits in silver grey or Bordeaux taffeta. French designer Letitia Hecht held the position of creative director for a couple of years and in 2003 sent out an autumn winter ready-to-wear collection which, inspired by women travelling in the Hungarian plains and the Carpathian forests, had a blast of bright colours, presenting men's woolens, jackets, oversized trousers and voluminous dresses. In 2007, the Guy Laroche collection, designed by Damien Yee, was a celebration of 50 years of the fashion house. Silk jersey dresses and skirts were paired with fitted sweaters and oversized cardigans, while Grecian-style cocktail dresses and gowns had dramatic feathered necklines. It was a glamorous, opulent collection in silk, cashmere, lace and fox fur, with colours black, grey, cream and shades of purple ranging from pale lilac to deep plum. To this day, Guy Laroche clothing is favoured by actresses and socialites from around the world. Best Oscar actress Hilary Swank looked a million dollars in the long-sleeved backless midnight blue Guy Laroche gown, as did Kristen Davis at the London premiere of Sex and the City wearing a vintage red chiffon gown. Eva Longoria also attended her film premiere in a chocolate brown satin Laroche gown. The Guy Laroche brand is now seen all across the world, and even with the label having a number of different designers over the last decade, they've always stayed true to the Laroche values of elegant, modern and refined fashion that will last forever.